<laughs> hey, whatever. <laughs> um, so welcome, welcome back to Groot. I'm really happy you decided to do it live, yeah. and thank, thank you for inviting me into your your room, your <laughs> this, dressing this room. Interesting <laughs> Christmas theme. Uh, green room. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Thank you. I appreciate that. Make sure the volume's up. Okay, good. <laughs> um, so, like, the first thing I wanted to ask you is, growing up on the the in, in the internet, yeah. it's it came out March eighth. Yeah. And the album is basically about you growing. Yeah. As a person and yeah. your your journey happy songs sad 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 songs and how much did did writing the album mean to to you at you know to help to help to help grow yeah i mean like it was it was kind of like the first two eps were like oh no it discovers therapy um so we got through that did all the childhood trauma stuff um and then i finished that and i was like oh there's like a big bulk of my life that i haven't even begun to process and it was a whole like growing up on the internet thing um and it's kind of like the way that i like i write i write music because it helps me understand my feelings um so like in the least like classical like i'm a musician music is therapy to me <laughs> but like that kind of thing like where i i didn't really realize the extent of like how much growing up on the internet in front of that many eyes like with having that many people give me constant feedback mm -hmm. um i didn't really realize how much of an impact that had on me until like last year maybe the year before um so there's a lot of processing but yeah i mean like i did not have a normal upbringing um like i had like hundreds of thousands of people like telling me who i should be who i should be who they wanted me to be mm. um and yeah I, I just we we wrote the first song growing up on the internet um i like voice memoed growing up on the internet think <laughs> it'll fuck your head um and after we wrote that song i was like oh dude like this is the whole album so it, it kind of just like fell into place but it was it, it helped me a lot like process stuff Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. And one thing I wanted to ask ask you, like you know, grown grown growing up and and being being trans, I'm, yeah. I'm sure like it it's been hard, like a yeah. lot of of bullying and teasing. Yeah. yeah. And that's something I can relate to too, because I yeah. got a, a speech impediment, yeah. I stutter, and from a kid up until now yeah. it's you know i'm constantly being teased and bullied over even now like having yeah. a show they make make fun of me if i stumble over my words oh, yeah. and like how do you deal with like when, when you get hate hate like that toward towards you i feel like because it's like i the way i see it is like the trans thing is like it is like a part of me but i feel like the hatred that people have towards trans people isn't like a direct mm -hmm. hatred of me it's like they don't hate me they just hate what they think I stand for and they hate what they think trans people stand for um so I've never really taken it personally like I because I've been doing this since I was 15 I like obviously the first few like shitty comments that I got about like the way I looked or like if I passed or that kind of thing like got to me way more before I was like before I had come out and like before I was comfortable with myself before I had transitioned like obviously that hurt a lot more now hurt, hurt a lot more then but like now it's like I don't give a shit like I just think uh, because I've been dealing with it for so long since like since I was a kid, I'm just mm. like, I read those comments and I'm just like, you're a stranger. Like, you don't know me. That Like, the reason you're so angry about me is because you've created this picture in your head of what you think I am. Um, and I think the, the thing that gets to me most is just like the misinformation. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what bothers me a lot because I, I get if like, you don't like me because I'm trans. Like, I don't give a shit. Like, it's like, why would I care about some stranger on the internet? But it bothers me when people spread these false ideas, like these dangerous ideas that like transitioning is something it's not. Like, the amount of comments that I get of people being like, oh, well, you're encouraging kids to go on testosterone and it'll mm -hmm. give them heart attacks. And I'm like, I'm not encouraging anyone to do anything. I'm just talking about how much happier I am with what I've done with my life. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, it, it, I, I read my comments way less now, um, but I also know, like, when, like, a storm is coming. Like, if a video does well and it's mm -hmm. about me being trans, um, I would just, like, I won't turn off the comments, but I'll just be like, I'm just not gonna, I'm gonna turn off my notifications. Um, but yeah, like I, I don't, I don't see those comments as like a reflection of who I am. Yeah. I just see them as a reflection of like the type of people that are leaving them. And it's not, that's nothing to do with me. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Mm. That, that's awesome. I love, yeah. I love hearing that. Yeah. Like, you know, especially when you don't, you don't let the fans get, 
to you if they have something something bad to say and yeah. and I'm I'm the same way now like I read the comments and I'm like all right well if you don't like me you don't like me yeah. I don't you know you don't yeah, have to watch yeah. the show it's just like wow good one good one very funny yeah, yeah I exactly like, I, but that's the thing because like they they comment shit and they're like oh these guys are losers but I'm just like you're the one leaving shit comments I know like you're on the internet I know exactly for no reason I know exactly exactly <laughs> <laughs> and. Is there a song off off your new al- album that means that means most to to you? Like a song you love the most, or a song that means mean means the most to you? I feel like because there are, I can never pick like a favorite or like one that means the most because they're yeah. all like they're all like important to me in different ways. I feel like the most the the one the so there's like two that I would be like most proud of i guess but like I'm, I'm proud of them all but for like different reasons i think lovely ladies is like one of my favorites okay that one it's just like a straight up punk song but i wrote it from the perspective of like the big scary transgender monster that the conservative media think i am so it's entirely like i i just spent a long time going through all my comments and being like okay so what do these transphobes believe i am and think about me and i just wrote it in a song because i was like if you write this down and say it out loud, it sounds as insane as it is. <laughs> but, like, when people read it on the internet, they're just like, oh, I guess that's just what trans people are like. But the whole idea is, like, since I've... I, I came out as trans when I was, like, 17 online. And I've mm-hmm. been, like, just talking about my life and documenting my life just because, like, the internet was where I could do that. Cause well, I, yeah. Because I, I didn't feel like I could do that in person. Um, but, like, since then, people have been calling me, like, a child groomer for just being like, hey, here's my life. I'm com- I'm like, I'm comfortable now. Um, so I just wanted to make a song about it. I was like, this is funny. It's silly. It's true. It's, it's like, it's like my true, like, uh, perspective of like what these people think about me. Um, I think it just goes hard. (laughs) So like either that song or alexithymia, which is like alexithymia is the inability to like recognize or communicate your own emotions, which is something that I've struggled with like for my entire life. Um, and I recently got diagnosed as autistic. Oh. And so I wrote this album before I was diagnosed. Oh, wow. But a lot of what I was going through was like, I'm diagnosed with autism. I was like, oh, shit. Like, I, I know there's something up, and I know it's probably autism. Haven't got the diagnosis. And I I kind of, the last few years, I've been looking back at my life with the perspective that, like, oh, you're an, aut- you're an autistic kid. And, like, mm-hmm. that's why you went through those struggles. Um, so I think Alexithymia, it's like, a, it's like a heavy, it's like a dark song, but it's also a fun way of, like, trying to, uh i guess express how i felt like okay. the whole song is about not knowing what's wrong with you yeah not really knowing like w- like what is up um and i thought like it's a dark song it's not like a happy song but i think the the idea of it is like hey i wish i could pull my brains out serve it to you on a plate and i wish you could eat it so you could tell me how it tastes so i would know specifically what the problem is um but i think that's a cool one and i think we did some weird shit with that song like half of it like the intro is just like a the sound of a drill that like Steph who produced it and I wrote it with got from Instagram and there's like a midsection where it's like a restaurant skit. Um, yeah, I think it's just weird and I, I've not heard anything like it. So like that's that that's my favorite one probably. I say that having said I don't know <laughs> but I think it's the weirdest, which makes me think it's the coolest. Okay. <laughs> and you know the this this new out al- uh, album sounds great like i love the songs on it and it it definitely has the punk the punk rock vibe yeah and did you listen to any punk rock bands to get ready for for this album not really i mean like i've always (laughs) i've always been like into that kind of music like my dad raised me on like nirvana oh yeah i remember i remember him showing me smells like teen spirit for the first time and like my world changing and like rage against machine like obviously like foo fighters isn't like punk but like adjacent and like I had a misfits phase when I was like 16. <laughs> um, so I've always been into that kind of stuff. And I think, <laughs> I think like lovely ladies is like the, the, the most like straight up punk song on the album. But that, that was like influenced by like, I, the guys I was writing it with are in a band called McFly. And I was mm-hmm. like, we should uh, listen to my Kim Chromas's first album. Cause there's a song called a lady of sorrows that I want to have like a specific vibe for the song. Um, but yeah, I mean like I, I kind of listen to everything. But, okay. um, and most of the songs that I end up writing myself just start off as punk songs. Um, and then I have to go to a place where I'm just like, yeah, but like, let's make it different. Let's make it cooler. Um, and I never really had like the confidence to sing that kind of music. 
Um, but it's always just been like how I write. I just, it just mm-hmm. so happened that this one worked out and it was on the album. Um, but I think it also matches like the 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 like the the themes of the album because a lot oh, of it yeah. is like anger um, based and like rebelling against whatever the fuck people tell you, you should be. So <laughs> I think I think it makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And you have a brand new song out and your, your music video. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's dropping today right yeah, yeah in a few hours in a, f- a few hours so what inspired you to make the music video for the song so that one's for alexa thymia which is like the whole like i wish i could pull my brain out serve it to you in a plate um and i think i think it was just like the most different like in terms of like the singles we released i know better was the first one that was weird that was very different from the other stuff weird to me is good so like um and then scumbag obviously <laughs> about transphobia but i feel i feel like alexa timing makes sense of the last single because it's like it's like heavier it goes hard it's also got a real catchy chorus mm-hmm. but it's also just like it's got some weird shit going on um and it was the one that i thought of that would like i could picture it when i was writing it i was like this is gonna make a ridiculous music video um so yeah the concept behind the music video is like obviously wish i could pull my brain out <laughs> diagnose me um so yeah i pull my brain out i chop it up put it in an <laughs> oven eat it um there's like a spinning wheel uh you know you know when you do like competitions and you like spin a wheel oh definitely yes yeah, <laughs> uh, my friends bliss and phoenix who do like the products production stuff in the music videos um they made a spinning wheel just of emotions okay so it's like it lands on whichever emotion you're feeling because like i don't fucking know <laughs> um but yeah that that one's fun it's like gory it's gross it's it's fun though it's it's, it's real strange I saw the pictures with the scars and the blood on your back. Yeah. It, it it definitely looks gory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's there's more to come. <laughs> and you know the 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 title of the the out the the album was it was it hard growing up on the in the internet was yeah. it was it hard for for to show like a personal side. Yeah, well, I mean, like, it was it was hard in the sense that, like, <clears throat> it wasn't, like, normal, and I didn't really know what to expect, and mm-hmm. I was a kid, and the internet is the internet, and, like, you have access to literally everything, yeah. um, which I feel like our generation, like, the generation I'm in is, like, the guinea pig generation, <laughs> like, they just throw us at the internet, and they're like, yeah, let's see what happens, um, <laughs> but it was also, like, if I'm, I'm glad I did it, because, like, I, I grew up in, like, a really conservative boarding school, mm-hmm. and I, I didn't come out as trans until after I finished school, because I knew I would get, I would, I would not have dealt with that well at school, yeah. um, so the only reason I, like, grew up on the internet was because it was the only place I could really be myself, um, and I found my community there, all the best friends that I have now, I met most of them from the internet, Oh wow! Um, so, like, it was hard in the sense that, like, I felt alone in my real life. Like yeah. I, I had like a split life where I was like a girl in school and a boy online. And it was, yeah, yeah. It, there was a lot going on, but like, it was hard. There were weird people that I interacted with, but I don't regret it. It's, it's just like, I think it, I think it kind of had to happen for me to get to where I am now. So it's, it was hard, but whatever. Well, <laughs> yeah. Life is hard sometimes. No, you're absolutely right. But yeah. it led to where you, you are now exactly, and yeah. you know, you're, you're you're here in Philly. Yeah, the show is completely sold sold out. Yeah, I would never so. have been here if, if I didn't grow up on the internet. So I'm, I'm not gonna be mad about it. <laughs> and you're currently on tour now. And what are you looking forward to the most for this current tour? Um, I think probably. I mean, like the 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 most fun thing that like happens every tour is just like getting close to everybody on the tour. Yeah. Um, because like meeting VIPs is fun, obviously, because I'm just like. But before I started doing shows and like meeting people face to face, it was hard not to see just like a number. It'd be mm-hmm. like, oh, like mm-hmm. two hundred thousand views. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's a number. But then when you meet people in person and they tell you about their story and their lives and like 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 pe- people will be like, yeah, I've watched every single video you posted since wow. twenty fifteen. And I'm like, that's crazy. Like, oh, wow. you keep up with me every week. Um, but like meeting those people is the loveliest, and like meeting the parents is the loveliest. Um, but then also just like getting close to everybody on the tour because like you're living with people for like a month yeah that's um, true and you you just get so close and the same with support bands as well like we're really getting on really well with tx2 and th jones i love everybody it's a great tour um but i think the show we're looking forward to most is chicago because like last okay. year that was the best the year before it was the best i think chicago has just like got a great live music scene oh um, right. and it's like one of the biggest shows so i'm oh. excited for that I, I i never knew they had a music scene like yeah. that yeah well, I, I think it's i think it's like pop punk adjacent as well because like fallout boy from there like Nothing oh, from there. yes there's yes. loads of really good bands from there that i think 
really just like that kind of genre. Oh, wow. Okay. And what do you usually pack when you go on tour? Like, like do you have like a certain, a certain things that you pack and then yeah. buy on the road? And <laughs> I have like, I have like a list of things that I bring every time. Um, I always overpack cause I'd rather overpack than underpack. Um, but yeah, no, I pretty much bring everything. I bring like my toilet, toilet, tree, toilet shoes bag is like this big. <laughs> Um, it has everything I need in case I get a cold, in case I get ill. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, the only stuff that I buy in America really is like maybe like flip flops. <laughs> um, what else? Snacks, I guess. I, I I bring everything I could possibly ever need. Yeah. Um, and then like my team like buys guitar picks. So, okay. Like, I, I'm I'm good. Like I I I oh that's what I get. Like my tour manager every year gets me a weighted blanket. Because we can't travel with a weighted blanket. Yeah, exactly. Half the fucking weight of the suitcase. Um, weighted blanket. We bought an air fryer this time. Nice. Yeah, it's nice. like because we have a bandwagon as well. So like, before we only had a microwave, and like you can't get a decent meal. No, just you can't. From a microwave nah. every day. So like, we got a air fryer. My boyfriend's a really good cook, so he's been cooking. All right. Um, but I, I pretty much bring everything that I can bring because I don't, I don't, I don't want to be stressing out in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the night like that. I don't have something. I'm a, I'm an over preparer. I that's that's the best the best way to be. I yeah. love that. Yeah. <laughs> and how's your stage show like for this for this tour? Like I saw like a little clip of you have you have the television on yeah, the stage yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. So how's how's the stage show been? Yeah, no, it's been good. I mean, like we because it's obviously like a new era, mm-hmm. the album, um, and like it's all like purple themed. I mean, like we we my year has been so busy that we just like haven't had like the time to like plan properly production stuff like we were gonna get like a light up microphone and like oh. other like matching stuff but like we've all been so busy like my bassist charlie was just on a tour with, with it with an artist called rory like we just did a, a support tour for enter shikari then he went on the tour with rory and then two days later came on this tour like my drummer was is in a band called fizz so he oh. was just on tour like a few days before we left for here oh my so, god like, we, we've all been proper busy um but yeah i mean like purple backdrop pink tv it's kind of like the branding of the album um and yeah i think i'm just in a real purple mood so, like <laughs> everything that we have like the merch is like purple as well oh man i love it yeah. nice <laughs> what do you love about touring and playing live um i think it's again just like seeing people's reactions like in real time because like obviously i'm used to like the internet where i'm just like everything's pre-recorded whereas this time it's just like you get to see people enjoy the songs you get to see which songs go down well you get to see like which lyrics connect with people um because like i've been singing on this album for like a year Mm -hmm. um so like having it finally be out and people knowing the words is like really cool are there are there any funny road stories traveling from city to city <laughs> i mean always there's always just like oh, like what i'm trying to think of a specific one oh, what, which one like can i tell you could tell whatever one you want um, <laughs> it's up to you <laughs> god i mean like, like it's, it's not that silly just like last night like everybody went out to a ice hockey game but it was like an hour and a half away, so me and my boyfriend were like, no, we need to nap. Um, so everybody went there, they got on the wrong train, it took them two hours. <laughs> they got home at like 1am, but there's like a door between our hotel rooms, so we just went in their hotel rooms. Like, My boyfriend was just like, we should just turn everything the wrong way around. So we just like flipped everything, including like the bathroom stuff, the bedroom stuff. Um, just like stupid stuff like that. Yeah. Like just, we're just like a family now, so we just like pull pranks and like take the piss out of each other. Oh man, I love it. <laughs> and I I saw you posted you're looking to get a new tat. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. what kind of tat are you looking to get? So we're gonna get like the little TV. We're gonna get like a matching tour tattoo because we got um my last UK no no a UK tour in 2022 which was like a similar team. We all mm-hmm. got matching tattoos from like the backdrop. So we're just gonna get the TV because it's like the album cycle. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and. Being in Philly, or are you going to try out any of the Philly food or the Rocky steak. Steps or anything like yeah. that? <laughs> is, it, is it a cheesesteak? It's a cheesesteak yeah, in Philly, cheese yeah. Steak. I've not had a cheesesteak yet. I think I had a shitty one last year and I'm going to eat it. So I need to go to a proper place, which my sound guy, Connor, like he, he's taught all around the world. Like okay. He, he knows the best place to go. So I think I'm just going to ask him where he's getting one from and I'll get a proper one. Which I'm excited for. Yeah, you, ha- you have to make sure you get like 
a good one. There's yeah. a couple places in Philly that yeah. say they make the best cheesesteaks and lie. So yeah, That's definitely, what, yeah, definitely, he, yeah, definitely he, find out. He's had the shitty ones, so he knows which ones to get. <laughs> okay, good. And when when you're getting ready to go on stage, like, what do you do to get to get your voice ready? Uh, like I do like a vocal warm up for like ten fifteen minutes. It's nothing crazy. It's like kind of boring um because like the i've only had a few singing lessons but uh-huh. the singing lessons that i've got from they were from, were from like a lady in like her 60s and she's <laughs> the best i love her she's really so cool but like it's kind of like classic music like warm-ups it's not like crazy like it like modern like new shit it's just like like scales and that kind of stuff um and then get changed get my in-ears on we we go behind stage and we give each other little fist bumps and then nice. we just go on there's, there's, there's no crazy like pre-show rituals really we just listen to music <laughs> okay here you go and I see you're selling pride pride flags yeah. too yeah, yeah, like yeah. at every show you're gonna be selling the flags yeah oh yeah, nice yeah. which was like something that like everybody was like you should do this and it's oh, taken yeah. three years I don't know why it took me so long to actually agree to do it I, I thought it was like a, a weird idea but like yeah they we, they sold out within two days, so we've had to order. Oh my god! Ones. So people are very happy with the pride flags. I see that. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and what kind of like music play playlist do you do you do when you're touring? Like you know that you listen to? Oh, uh, <laughs> like a lot of pop punk. A lot of pop punk. We listen to like the support acts that we've had for the last few tours. There's a band oh, wow. that we toured with last year called Action Adventure. Who are just like they make pop punk with breakdowns and it's just like it's the most fun thing ever. Did you ever listen to Four Year Strong? No. So there's they 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 sound kind of similar to Four Year Strong. They're another pop punk band from Chicago as well. Oh okay okay. Um, but sorry no, Action Adventure from Chicago. Um, but yeah, we just listen to their music a lot. We listen to Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh Queen. Just, yeah yeah, yeah just, definitely. Just, just like stuff that goes off. Nice. Mm. And if you were going to go out and stop at a karaoke bar, what would be your song, your go-to? Oh, <laughs> God. Yeah, I've only ever done karaoke once, I think. Oh, oh really? Twice. <laughs> uh, I mean, the last one that we did was like, uh, there's, oh, there's a song called Year 3000 by uh, Busted. Okay. I think in the US people know it because jo- the Jonas Brothers did a cover yes, of it. Yes, yes. But in the UK, it's like, it's an original song by Busted, so probably Busted Year 3000. Oh, nice, nice. And are you into, like, anime and comic books? Like, do you have, like, a favorite uh, a superhero and villain? No, not really. I mean, like, <laughs> my, my boyfriend's really into comic books. I I got obsessed with Spider-Man when I was a kid. All right, like, okay. Spider-Man is always my shit. Like, I had three Spider-Man costumes when I was a kid. One to wear, one in the cupboard, one in the cupboard and one in the wash. Like it was all I wore for like a year straight. Nice. So, but then I never really got into anything else. I think I think Spider Man is always going to be like the main one for me. Oh right, okay. Yeah. And what about food? Like, what kind of food do you love to eat? Uh, I'm a snacker. Oh, I just, like, all right. I, I, but I really love salami. Or like steak is my favorite food. My boyfriend's okay. a vegan, but like <laughs> he and I, I when we're at home, like I half the meals I eat are like vegan. So like. I don't feel as bad, but like I love a good steak. <laughs> okay, so like when you're touring, you'll go out and get the steak, right? You, you don't yeah, have to yeah, be yeah. be vegan when you're touring. Well, it, it depends. <laughs> no, because like he, he cooks for us as well with the air okay. so, Like if he cooks, it'll be vegan. So okay, there like, you go. It's like a bit of both. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And um, it, the last question that I will ask you is like, where could fans follow you, and where could they buy your album? Yeah. And... Um noffense.com is where you can get the album you, you can just google no offense vinyl or cd and it'll come up i think that we're in walmart or like target now or some shit it's ridiculous we're in hmv in the uk um yeah just google it and it'll come up um but there's also vinyls merch on my website and then yeah no offense everywhere is like my socials so yeah just no offense <laughs> they they still have HMV yet? like they used to have one here in philly i used to yeah. love that store well so they they went <laughs> under, they went under twice and now they're back. So oh. I don't know how that happened. They were bought out by like a new owner or something. But yeah, they still exist in the UK, like in, in big cities. Oh my God, that's so awesome. Cool. Yeah. I, I used to go there as a kid. I know, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then they would have the headphones. You could yes. listen to yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. Oh my God, yeah. yeah. They still exist somehow. <laughs> They've survived. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, th- thank you so much for doing this, for ha- having me come over here and doing this. Like, really? I, I really appreciate it a lot. Thank, thank you. No, thank you for having me again. It's fun. Yeah, definitely. All right.